437. Would you turn with me, please? Since the Savior found me, pardoned all my sin, I'm saved, saved, saved. Let's all stand together. 437 on that first. Since the Savior found me, pardoned all my sin, I have had the joy and living hope within. And sorrows of the past, they're underneath the precious blood of Christ at last. I'm saved, 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 I'm happy all the way. Saved, 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 I love him more each day. Saved, 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 I know he's mighty charm. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his arm. Since the Savior found me, all to him I owe. For his precious blood has washed me white as snow. Now no condemnation, happy as can be. I'm glad that Jesus justifies and sets me free. I'm safe, safe, safe. Saved, 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 I love him more he's saved. Saved, 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 I know he's mighty tar. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. Since the Savior found me, I have perfect rest. Living in the realms of joy and happiness. Leaning on my Savior, looking for that day. When he shall come to catch his whining bride away. Save, 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 I'm happy all the day. Save, 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 I love him more each day. Save, 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 I know he's mighty charm. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. All right, good singing, and uh, good to see you back in church tonight. And uh, let's see. We have the arrival of Octavia June Matthews. That is the first grandchild of Mark and Terry Bunner. How about that? That was yesterday? Last night, November 27th. And uh, Grandma and Grandpa now down in the front row, so I <laughs> call them that. And uh, congratulations to everyone. Everybody's doing well? That's great. Praise the Lord for that. And uh, we're thankful. That. And I, did I just see before I came in here that Melinda was in an accident? Do you know anything about that? No? Okay. I don't know. Maybe I just told you something you didn't know. I don't know. Have you heard from her recently? Okay. Huh. I don't know. Okay. Maybe that was something else. Maybe it's somebody else. Well, yeah, I know. We won't talk about Heather's accident. No. Leave that alone, all right? And uh, <laughs> speaking of bruises, yes, well, uh, <laughs> all right, let's have a word of prayer together, shall we? Father, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for the opportunity for us to be together in the house of the Lord. And Lord, we're so grateful to come together and sing. We're saved, saved, saved. And Lord, because not of what we've done, but because of what you have done for us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring about us. And Lord, thank you for meeting with us this morning. We thank you for decisions that were made for you today. We pray now that you'll meet with us again tonight. Uh, make this service exactly what you know that we need it to be. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Well, let's sing 327 together. 327, Springs of Living Water. <clears throat> let's sing that first all together. I thirsted in the barren land of sin and shame. And nothing satisfying there I found. But to the blessed cross of Christ one day I came, where springs of living water did abound. Drinking at the springs of living water, happy now am I, my soul they satisfy. Drinking at the springs of living water, oh, wonderful and bountiful supply. How sweet the living water from the hills of God. It makes me glad and happy all the way. Now glory, grace, and blessing mark the path I've drawn. I'm shouting hallelujah every day. Drinking at the springs of living water. Happy now am I, my soul they satisfy. Drinking at the springs of living water. Wonderful and bountiful supply. 
Remember this week, uh, Wednesday night, right back here for the midweek service, and uh, the children's clubs will be meeting as usual on Wednesday evening. We'll be continuing our study on the spiritual warfare and the armor of God on Wednesday night. Um, then Friday night, of course, are you right here at 7 p.m., Reformers Unanimous, uh, Saturday morning. Uh, we have men's breakfast at 8.15 Saturday morning. Sign up for that, fellows. We have a great time of fellowship and always a good time around God's Word as well. On Saturday morning, 8.15 for the men's breakfast. Uh, there'll be, there's a sign-up sheet downstairs. We want to help decorate the uh, church for Christmas. That takes place Saturday morning as well, 9.30. Our soul winning and bus visitation at 10 o'clock, and uh, things will be on the go. Ladies, um, you're... Christmas uh, party's coming up no, uh, December the 5th. That's a Monday night, and uh, you sign up for that downstairs. And let's see, what was I told? Don't forget, there's a white elephant gift exchange, okay? And uh, that's, that's usually just something you already have, okay? But you'd rather someone else have it, okay? <laughs> and uh, you look around, you find something, you say, boy, I'd like to get rid of that. Well, here's your chance, Okay. Only, yeah, can't be, can't be your children or your husband. Other than that, we'll uh, let you go for it, okay? Great, I'm told, great, unbelievable, incredible finger food. It will be available, all right? So uh, don't miss out on that, ladies. Sign up downstairs for that. Uh, there's also a sign-up sheet down there for Emily's shower. Uh, Emily and John come in on Tuesday the 6th. And when is the shower? The week week later the 13th okay uh sign up for that down there i think it's in the afternoon if i remember right two o'clock or something like that okay and uh so ladies take note to that if you would please and uh take care of that was that okay Ann? you okay with that good all right and uh, make sure you get that on your agenda okay um adult christmas banquet out at dear dutchman that's always a great time and uh, that'll be on Monday night, the 12th. And so get your reservation for that. You see uh, Carol Coleman, and she'll take care of you for that after the service tonight. Okay? All right. Take a minute. And uh, anybody here tonight for the first time? Looking around? I don't think so. Our Pennsylvania folks are with us heading back to Commonwealth, and it's good to see them again. And uh, that's great. Heading back for the few weeks before Christmas break. And... Uh, that's great. What year, are you, what year are you in college? You're a freshman, both of you? Okay, all right. First time through the circus, huh? Okay, well, <laughs> you'll get used to it, amen? And uh, great. Thanks for stopping in and being in church tonight. Let's hear from the choir.
502-502. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? 502. Let's sing that first together. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain for me who him to stand as we sing that third verse together this is a tough one to sing sitting down I think let's sing this last together long my imprisoned spirit lay long my imprisoned spirit lay and nature's night thy night if you good singing. Let's go over a few pages to 539. 539. All oh, that thrills my heart, all that thrills my soul is Jesus. Who can cheer the heart like Jesus by his presence all divine? Let's sing that first together. <clears throat> Who can cheer the heart like Jesus by his presence all divine? True and tender, pure and precious. Oh, how blessed to call him mine. Oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of 10,000 in my blessed Lord I see. Ladies, sing that second. Love. All together now. All oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of 10,000 in my blessed. 
blessed Lord, I see men on that third. What a wonderful redemption. Never can a mortal know how my sin, the red like crimson, can be whiter than the snow. All together. Oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of 10,000 in my blessed Lord I see. Amen. Great one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guest. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together. Every need his hand supplying, every good in him I see, on his strength divine relying, is all in all to me. All oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus, he is more than life to me. The fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see. Let's sing that last together by the crystal flowing river with the ransom. I will sing when we get to the chorus. We'll have the instruments drop out on that last together by the crystal flowing river with the ransomed I will sing and forever and forever. King, all oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me, and the fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see. Amen. Be seated, if you will. Great job of singing tonight. Men, you did a great job. Boy, I love hearing the men sing, don't you? Love to hear men sing. Ladies, you sound beautiful. 
real pretty, but boy, I like hearing the men belt it out. Amen. That's a blessing. All right. Time for the offering tonight. We'll ask God to bless our giving this evening. And uh, Brother Abrams, lead us in our prayer tonight, if you would, please. There you are. Lord and Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of kindness, and uh, we thank you for another Sunday worship, uh, a day to uh, spend in your house. We give you the glory, and Lord, uh, we ask that you uh, bless this offering now tonight and bless our pastor as he brings the message that only you can give. And Lord, uh, touch each heart and uh, give uh, everyone uh, uh, exactly what you need to have them have out of tonight's message. And Lord, you uh, touch their heart and uh, use them as you would. In Jesus' name, we ask, amen. amen. Take your Bible this evening, if you would, please, to Ezekiel chapter 1. Ezekiel chapter 1, please, for our scripture reading. We are going to read verses 4 through 10 of Ezekiel chapter 1. And we'll read the verses responsibly, begin together on verse number 4, and alternating, I'll read 5, we'll alternate until we end together on verse 10 of Ezekiel chapter 1. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. <clears throat> All of us standing, please, to read God's word. And let's begin together on verse 4. Ready? And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man, and every one had four faces, and every one had four wings, and their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass." And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. And let's pray together, shall we? Father, add your blessing to the scripture reading here this evening. And Father, I pray that you would continue to make our hearts ready to receive the truth from your word tonight. Lord, we want to thank you for the wonderful music. Uh, thank you for the hymns of God. Thank you, Lord, for these uh, men and women of God who you helped to write down some words that we could sing tonight with grace in our hearts unto you. 
Thank you for people who love to be in the house of God and for people who love to assemble together with other believers. And Lord, we long to hear from you this evening. And so I pray your blessing yet on the special and that our hearts would become one with your heart and that we'd all have ears to hear what would you'd like to say to us this evening. So bless the special in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, we bow before you in prayer as we come to the preaching of your word. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity again to open up your word. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you, God, for holy men of old as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. and You had them pen the words that you wanted us to have. And Lord, I believe tonight that we look into this Old Testament book of Ezekiel, that, Lord, you'll have us glean from here the truths that you would Have us to learn this evening. Father, I pray the Holy Spirit of God, you'll do what only you can do in the hearts and lives of people tonight. Honor your word as it goes forth is my prayer. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. The call of Ezekiel uh, is here in chapter 1, and God gives him a vision. And notice in verse 1 of Ezekiel chapter 1, if your Bible is open to there, It talks about in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, I was among the captives by the river Kibar. uh, That the heavens were open, and notice what he says, I saw visions of God. Uh, So he gets a vision here, and the vision, uh, part of what he sees is four living creatures. And each of these creatures had four faces. Uh, They're they're, uh, described for you in some of the verses we read tonight, and then even some Uh, following, and uh, I won't get into the prophetical significance of this and what they meant for Israel or anything like that. I want to draw something from their faces, all right? Uh, Particularly says they had four faces. I I think there is meaning for Ezekiel and meaning uh, for what they meant to Israel at that time, but uh, that's not for us for this evening's message. Uh, I want to, to, to desire, I want to take out of this these four faces the creatures had and apply them to us as Christians. I think, 
I think every Christian ought to be a four-faced Christian. Okay? I, I know you know people who, when they're, not, when they're one way one place and they're another way another place, you say they are two-faced. They've got uh, two different ways they talk. Uh, whether we call them two-faced or talking out of both sides of their mouth or whatever you want to say, uh, we use that as two-faced. And I'm not uh, advocating anybody be two-faced, uh, but I think the Scripture advocates that we could be four-faced. And it's based on these uh, creatures here and the qualities that I think that these faces would, would give to us. And, and, and I think that there are four qualities that every Christian ought to possess. Now, not just to be a Christian, but to be a strong Christian. To be an out-and-out Christian, as we say. To be a Christian that pleases God. To be, and by the way, that's the kind of Christian you ought to be. I don't just want to be a Christian, I want to be an out-and-out Christian. I don't just want to be a Christian, I want to be a Christian that pleases God. And I think you do too, or you wouldn't be at church on Sunday night. Uh, and, and so I believe you desire that same thing. Now, let's look at these four faces this evening, shall we? Uh, and I'm not going to take them necessarily in the order that they're mentioned here in verse number 10, uh, but I want you to know that first of all, I'm going to talk about the face of a lion. That's the second one mentioned, I think, in verse 10. But let's talk about the face of the lion first for our study here this evening. Now, the face of the lion, uh, beside that, you would put strength. Strength. He's the king of the jungle. Uh, when the Bible talks about Jesus Christ, it says he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Uh, denotes strength in power. The, the psalmist said, The Lord is the strength, is my strength and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Paul said to the, to the Ephesian Christians, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of of his might. When Joshua was taken over from Moses, God came to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 and said, Be strong and of a good courage. When David came to Solomon and Solomon, David's ready to die now and Solomon's facing the task of having to build the house for God. The thing that was in David's heart, but God said, David, you won't do it. Solomon, your son, will build it. David's going to die. And he calls Solomon in and he says, Solomon, be strong and show thyself a man. Be strong, Solomon. He, tells, he told uh, Joshua, be strong and of a good courage. Paul told the Ephesians, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Paul said to Timothy, Timothy, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Talking about strong. Listen, don't just be a Christian. Be a strong Christian. Don't just, don't just settle for being average. Be a strong Christian. That means be clean. That means be holy. That means be separate. That means be faithful. That means stand up for God. That means do what you know is right. Do what you know is right in God's sight. Strong Christians witness when they work. Strong Christians will be a testimony where they work. Strong Christians will carry their Bible or their New Testament with them to work and won't be ashamed for people to know they're a Christian. Strong Christians are, will dress differently than the world. Strong Christian men will look like men, and strong Christian women will look like women. There ought to be, and no one should have to look you up and down and examine you to figure out just which you are. Thank you. Strong Christians get up. Hey, strong Christians get up when the alarm sounds so they can make sure they spend time with God. That's a strong Christian. Strong Christians are faithful to the house of God Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Uh, sun's rise east, sets in the west, two plus two is four, water runs downhill, I go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Uh, three to thrive, three to thrive, and four to soar if you count Sunday school, amen. So uh, be faithful to the house of God. And, and so, a strong Christian. I want to be a strong Christian. I'm going to have the face of a lion. Strong Christians resist temptation. Strong Christians can say no to alcohol. Strong Christians will say no to drugs. Strong Christians say no to tobacco. Strong Christians can say no to immorality. Uh, strong Christians can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth them. That's a strong Christian. Listen, dare to stand alone for Christ. Don't worry if anybody else is doing it. Don't say, well, nobody believes that anymore. I don't care if nobody believes it anymore. I'm going to stand for what's right. Oh, what our country needs again are not just Christians, 
We need some strong Christians. We need some folks with convictions and the face of a lion and say, I'm going to stand strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And boy, it'll make a difference in our country. I tell you, I, uh, Brother Booth told me uh, just before he left that uh, uh, a good friend of his was, in fact, he was with uh, Pastor Fugit uh, at, a, at a preacher's meeting. They had up here in uh, Oberlin, Ohio, I believe it was. And uh, he was up there preaching, and he was, they were waiting on him. Uh, one of them young men that he was with was talking to Pastor Fugit, and Pastor Fugit got a phone call. And he said, hold on just a minute. And he was talking on the phone. He wanted the young man to wait for him. And it was quite a, quite a lengthy call. It was like 10 or 15 minutes. And the young man waited, and when he hung up, and Pastor Fugit looked at him, and he said, you'll never guess who that was. And the young man said, I probably wouldn't. He said, that was Vice President Mike Pence. And he called him on his cell phone. And he just called to tell him, he said, I just want you to know that the Johnson bill, there's a Johnson bill that was passed saying that preachers are not allowed to preach against any legislation. In other words, uh, if a law has been passed in Congress, if you preach against that, it can be considered hate speech and the preacher could go to jail. And Congress passed that, by the way. He just said, I want you to know we have done away with that. That was, that was Mike Pence. He said, that bill has been tossed out. That will not be considered. And he said, and then he said this to, to Pastor Fugit. He said, I want you to let us know anything else we can do to help bring revival to our country. Amen. That's going to be the new vice president of the United States, my friend. Uh, that's, that's good news, my friend. And you know how you get that? You get that when you take a strong stand for Christ. And be out and out as a Christian. So let's, let, let's, let's have the face of a lion. Amen? Let's have that for the Lord. Now, let's look at the second face I'd like to point out to you tonight. And that is, it mentions the face of an ox on the left side. The face of an ox. Now, an ox is a beast of burden. The ox really is for one thing. And you know what it's for? It's for work. Okay? An ox is a beast of burden. It's there to work. In fact, we use expressions like that. We used to say, man, that guy works like an ox. Okay? I know that's not real modern anymore. Maybe they use something else now. But we used to say some guy's strong. Boy, he's strong as an ox. And some of you guys remember those, those terms. And, uh, and so, you know, God, listen, God made man to work. Let me just park there a while, all right? Uh, when God created Adam and he put him in the garden... He gave Adam the garden to take care of and to work. Work is not a dirty four-letter word. All right? Work is good, and work ought to be something that everybody wants to do. There's no excuse for someone to be lazy. There's no excuse for ever excuse for anyone. Listen, don't be a lazy Christian, but don't be a lazy person in general. Someone said very often we're halfway out of our predicament when we get up and start working. We're halfway out of our predicament when we just get up and start working. Oh, you know, our country, listen, our country's in a mess tonight because, because one out of every five households in the United States of America is receiving a check from the federal government. And we cannot sustain that. And there was a day in America where folks would have been embarrassed to take a handout. I remember listening to J. Vernon McGee. Anybody remember listening to him on Through the Bible? Get on the Bible bus, my friends. And uh, he would, uh, he, he talked about, he pastored uh, out in Los Angeles for years, Church of the Open Door. And I remember, I remember him giving this illustration. And, and he said he pastored out there, and I think it was in the 1950s, and they had a new uh, development uh, going in out there, and uh, a new subdivision, and the houses were selling real well except for one street in that subdivision. They could not sell a lot. They could not get anybody to build a house. And they were trying to, they finally had a meeting with the commissioners of that development, and they said, what are we going to do? They said, well, I guess the only thing we have to do is change the name of that street. You say, what street name was there where nobody wanted to buy? You know what it was? Charity. Nobody wanted to be known as living down there on charity. Charity is handout. Charity is where, you're, yeah, that's what they called it when the government gave you stuff back then. They called it, you were on charity. And nobody wanted to be considered living on charity. Boy, we come a long way in 60 years. Huh? Where people unashamedly, they, they, they think that, hey, it is not, and, and we see that with all the support that the socialists got during the recent presidential election and in the campaign. 
We had, we had overwhelming support, millions of people thinking that a socialist should get it and just give me, give me, give me. Give me free college, give me free housing, give me free food, give me a free phone, give me everything free. I deserve it. No, work for what you get. Jesus said it. Listen, the Bible says if a man doesn't work, neither should he eat. I tell you what, work for... You know, you, you, God made you to work, fellas. God made us to produce. And so find something to do. Find something to be able to, to, to produce and, and, and earn a living and help yourself. It's a way to work. And by the way, that translates over then into our Christianity, does it not? Folks get saved and then they don't want to work. Listen, and, and, but the Bible says we're saved to serve Jesus Christ. Over and over again you'll find in the Bible when Paul opened his epistles, he didn't say Paul the scholar, though he could have. He didn't say Paul the revelator, though he got more revelation and gave us half the New Testament than anybody else. He didn't even say Paul the church planner, Paul the evangelist. He said, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. He said, I'm just a laborer for God. I'm here to serve Jesus Christ. And, and listen, everybody can serve. Not everybody's going to get on the piano and play like Lisa plays. Not everybody's going to play an organ. Not everybody's going to get up and sing a special like you heard tonight. Not everybody's going to be able to have that ability. But I'll tell you what everybody can do. Everybody can work. Everybody can work. Everybody can labor for the Master. We sing the song, Let us labor for the Master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all His wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and our what? Our work on earth is done. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. You know, we say, oh, I want to live that Jesus will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well then, listen, you better have done something. Amen. And it's so difficult. We have churches that they can't have a bus ministry and they can't have an argue ministry and they can't have hardly any outreach at all. You know why? They can't get anybody to work. Oh, it's all they can do to get people to come to church one hour on Sunday. Feel happy, feel clappy and go home and say, I'll see you next week. Listen, my friend, that's not what Christianity is all about. We need some Christians that have the face of an ox. Now, I know some of you are thinking, I got that down, preacher. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. You don't have to look like one, all right? But uh, get the face where I'm going to work. I want to labor for the master. Ox is for labor. And by the way, when you think about ox, usually don't think of a single. Usually oxen work in pairs, don't they? So usually a yoke of oxen. In other words, you have to think, not only do I work, but ask yourself this question. Am I able to work with other people? Am I able to work well with others? Or am I kind of the, the, the you know, guy who's on his own or the girl who's on her own because no one else will want to be around me? No one else can work with me. After all, there are two ways to do things, my way and the wrong way. Huh? If, if you're that kind, you're, you're, you, don't, you don't have the face of the ox. Ox means, an ox also meant sacrifice. When... David went to sacrifice to the Lord. Remember Arana the Jebusite? He had the oxen there. David took the wood and, and he broke it up and made the altar and, uh, and the, then, then killed the oxen as a sacrifice. That was a sacrifice. By the way, we're to give our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. So how do I serve and get along with others? You have to sacrifice something. Where's Listen, if I'm going to serve God and if you're going to work for God, I'll guarantee you there's got to be a sacrifice somewhere. I was thinking tonight about the men. We have men who are involved with Reformers Unanimous. And listen, I'm talking about men who, they're here at church on Wednesday night. They're here, uh, they, they go to the prison on Thursday night. They, most of them 5.30 and get home at 9 o'clock at night. And then turn around and involve Friday night from 6.30 to about 10 o'clock. On Friday night. And then, and then you have Sunday morning and Sunday night. Let me ask you a question. You think those fellows ever would not to like to have a Thursday or Friday? Hmm? Take some sacrifice. Take some sacrifice, Skip, and, and go 7.30 to 11.30 every Saturday morning. The fellows who go out to London. If you're going to come out and go soul winning on Saturday and give your Saturday morning from 10 o'clock to noon, we think, let us labor for the Master from the dawn to setting sun, but we can't give people to give two hours on Saturday. We're not talking about from the dawn to setting sun. Two hours on Saturday. But you have to sacrifice something. 
You have to sacrifice something. You won't serve God. Uh, it, it, David said, Arana, Arana wanted to give it to David. David said, I'm not sacrificing unto the Lord my God that which costs me nothing. And if it's, how can I call that a sacrifice if it doesn't cost me anything? He's worthy. So there's sacrifice. Not my will, but thine be done. Not what I want, what he wants. Someone said it's amazing what could be done if there's no concern over who gets credit for it. It's amazing what could get done if you're just not concerned over who gets credit for it. Are you a worker for God? Do you have the face of the ox for strength, for work, for sacrifice? The lion for strength, the ox for work. Let's go to the third face. Let's talk about the eagle. The last thing it said, they also had the face of an eagle. The key with the eagle is its vision. Of all the creatures that God made, the eagle sees further than any other creature. They soar so high because they can see so well. And they see so much more. Someone said, poor eyes will limit your sight, what you see, but poor vision will limit your deeds, what you do. Proper vision always says forward. Proper vision says never stop. Proper vision always says don't quit. Proper vision always says let's keep going. Proper vision says what that sign says back in the back. That I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to live above the world where Satan's darts at me are hurled. Oh Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I hope you desire that. What's your vision? What, what can God do with you? What do you think God can do with your life? The eagle, something else about the eagle is the eagle retains its youth longer than any other of God's creatures. That's why, that's why the Bible says your, new, your youth will be renewed like the eagles. Because they, they retain their youth more than any other animal. One lady kept going to the pastor and all she'd ever complained about was how tired she was. I'm just tired, pastor. I'm just tired. I'm just tired. He said, man, it's just, it's just not right. You're tired all the time. She goes, well, I'm just tired. He said, well, I got news for you. I got a verse for you. He said, you know, it says when the Lord comes back that those who are asleep in Christ will rise first. He said, the Bible says you'll, be, you'll get to sleep. Now, you'll, you're, you're, you will go to heaven right away when you die. But your body gets to go to the grave and sleep. You'll get to have plenty of rest. Sleep, 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 sleep. And she hung her head. And he goes, what's the matter? He goes, she goes, no. He said, it'll be my luck. I'll die on Thursday night. And the Lord will come back Friday morning. <laughs> and I'll only get one night's sleep. <laughs> That's all I'll get. Wow. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run and not be. They'll run and not faint. See, they walk and not faint. The, the eagle, vision and energy. That's the face of an eagle. Where's your, where's your energy for God? I'm not opposed to, to, the, the, to the energy that was around the horseshoe yesterday. There was a lot of energy there, wasn't there? And there was a lot of energy in the houses of people who were watching that game yesterday. And there was energy at our house too. But listen to me, that, that it, I'm not opposed to that, but I'm opposed to that, and then the same people sit in church on Sunday like bumps on a log. Where's your energy for God? Hey, hey, if you ever take a Saturday and, and you go for four hours or five hours or six hours to a ball game, and you never spent four or five or six hours on a Saturday serving God on a bus route, passing out flyers for a big day, going out soul winning, trying to do something for God, then something's wrong with your Christianity. Something's wrong with your Christianity. You got your priorities in the wrong place. Not opposed to the one, but why can I get energy for the one and I don't have any energy for the other? 
In fact, I can't even muster a fourth of that time for something else, for God. Let's make sure that we're having the vision and the energy for God we ought to have, the face of the eagle. So we have three faces so far. We had the first face was the lion, and that represented what? Strength. Strength. Be strong in the Lord. Be a strong Christian. Then we had the second face was that of an ox, and that represented work, working for God. And, and that included the sacrifice, being sacrificial. And then we had the eagle, and his main characteristic was vision, vision and energy, energy. Then the last face. The last face is the face of a man. The face of a man. The only one now, you notice, not an animal. A man. Because it matters not how strong the lion may be. It matters not how hard the ox may work. It matters not how high the eagle may soar. None of them were made to fellowship with God. Only man was made to fellowship with his Creator. That was reserved for mankind. Only man can look up to God and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Only man was made to walk with God. Man was made to fellowship with his Creator. Only man can read this book right here. Only man can receive the salvation that God has provided for us through Jesus Christ. Only man can pray and commune with God. Only man can receive the Spirit of God. Only man can live a life holy to God. Man was created to walk with God. Man was created for the pleasure of God. Man was created to to propagate the gospel of God. Let me ask you a question. Are you fellowshipping with God? If you, don't, if you don't spend time talking to God, reading His Word, studying His Word, memorizing His Word, meditating His Word, uh, building that relationship with God, you're not fulfilling the purpose for which He created you. You're supposed to have the face of a man. We're not just animals. okay? We're human beings. We're human beings. And, and we're made, we get to know God. Hey, I, I know, listen, I know you get close to your pets, whatever they may be. But they can't have a relationship with God. But you can. They can't talk to God, but you can. They can't know Him, but you can. They can't read His Word that He's given to you, but you can. Are you fellowshipping with Him? Are you getting to know Him? Don't miss that. Don't miss out on that. You were made and I was made in the image of God. What an honor. What a privilege. I want to have the face of a man. I want to have fellowship with God. That's, why, that's where it all started. God would come down in the cool of the day in the Garden of Eden and take walks with Adam and Eve. That's what, that's what He made them for. When they sinned and they disobeyed, God was coming to take another walk with them. But now they couldn't. They knew. They were, they were hiding from His presence. They were afraid. What had happened? Sin. Sin. And then God had to separate them. He had to banish them from the garden. And for many, many years, listen, man would only hear from God through a prophet or a priest. Someone had to tell them what God said. Till one day, He sent His only begotten Son into the world. And Jesus Christ came and lived a perfect, sinless life died on the cross for our sins. And when He died on the cross that day, the veil of the temple, that which separated man from God, was rent in two from the top down to the bottom. God opening the way from God down to man. And now we have the privilege to come into the presence of God. We have the privilege by the blood of Jesus Christ to enter into the Holy of Holies. And we can go there anytime we want. We can come boldly to the throne of grace 
anytime we desire. We can come talk to our Heavenly Father anytime we want. The circuits are never busy. You never get His answering machine. He's always available. Are you fellowshipping with God? Are you communicating with Him? Four faces. The lion for strength. The ox for labor. For sacrifice. The eagle for vision. For energy. And man for fellowship with God. Are you a four-faced Christian? Why don't you ask God to help you to be one tonight? Let's pray together, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. Lord, thank you for this vision that you gave to Ezekiel. And Lord, as we just saw these four faces on this creature, Lord, I believe you were, there's a message here for us to learn and a message for us to apply to our lives today. We want to be strong Christians. We want to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. We want to know that our strength is in the Lord. We want to labor for you. We want that face of an ox. There's some tonight, Lord, that need to say, God, give me the face of an ox. Give me the labor for you that I need. I need to serve Jesus Christ. Others, Lord, need a vision of what God can't do. We would see things the way you see things. We see things from your perspective, not our perspective. Give us that vision of what you can do in us and through us. Lord, remind us that we're man. We were created in your image. We are created spirit, soul, and body that we might fellowship with you. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, thank you for that privilege. Thank you for that honor. Forgive us for taking it for granted. And sometimes just simply abusing it and neglecting it. Help each of us tonight to bow our knee and say, make me a four-faced Christian, please. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed and I'll finish praying just a moment. We'll have our invitation. Just wonder tonight how many people here this evening that say, Preacher, God spoke to my heart tonight. I desire to be a four-faced Christian. I want these four qualities in my Christian life. And Preacher, the Lord has spoken to my heart about it. With His help, by His grace, I intend to be a four-faced Christian. Pastor, pray for me this evening. Will you slip your hand up? Say, Pastor, pray for me. Amen. Amen. That's wonderful. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have your invitation. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this evening. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to our hearts tonight. I pray your will to be done in every heart in life now. Hear our prayer that we make on bended knee here at this altar this evening. Lord, thank you for meeting with us. Make us four-faced Christians, please. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Bob's going to sing, God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this evening, will you please? Oh, to That's Jesus right. I surrender, all oh, to him I freely give. I will ever love, trust him, he presence daily live. I surrender all, oh, I surrender Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. Humbly at His feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all. I surrender all, 
you for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts tonight through your word. Thank you for the Bible. Lord, I, I don't know what we'd do if we didn't have your word. I pray, Lord, for those folks in this world that have yet to receive a copy of the word of God. You would burden our hearts to get the job done and truly get the gospel to every creature in their language so they can understand. Father, help us to be about your business now this week. Make us mindful that you're with us and your presence is near us. I pray you'll dismiss us with your care now. Lord, we love you. We thank you for another wonderful day in the house of God. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Don't forget the sign-up sheets downstairs. Take a look at those. Make sure you get plugged in where you can. And uh, let's sing. I'm so. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Let's hear you sing tonight, all right? One more time. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus anywhere and everywhere I go for. It's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You are dismissed.